Welcome to another JD uh, Express screencast with me, Tisha Marco, and today I will help you, especially for those who are teaching GED RLA, I will help you in understanding what the GED RLA test is. So this video will serve as a teacher's guide to the GED RLA tests. It may also help some test takers or interested to know um, what the test uh, content is all about and how the test is scored and just some general information about the GED test um, and some specific information on the GED RLA. So let's proceed. Now, I would advise all educators to download what we call as the GED Educator Handbook. Now, you can access this handbook on the GED website, that's GED.com, or you can actually search it on Google. You can actually uh, type in the keywords, GED Educators Handbook. And eventually, it's going to be the first one that will pop up, and it's in PDF form. So it's really important to have an access of this, especially when you are teaching students uh, or um, helping out students in preparing for their GED test, whatever subject it is. So let's proceed with, uh, let's skip some parts because I want to focus on the GED RLA tests, okay? Uh, let's go here. The GED RLA test or the reasoning through language arts test. So let's have an overview. Let me zoom on that. So the test is uh, gonna be around 150 minutes. That includes a 10 minute break. It includes multiple choice, drop down, and a variety of technology enhanced items. So, <clears throat> drag and drop. Sometimes there will be some diagrams, and you will have to label them. So, you have to drag the labels into a certain part of the graph or a diagram. And of course, sometimes you have to scroll down. Okay, so drag and drop, drop down, multiple choice, all of those kind of questions. So this includes 145 minutes extended response or the essay part. So what is not written here is that it's a three-part exam or it's a three-part test. Uh, the part one uh, and part three will be composed of multiple choice, drop down, drag and drop, while the part two is a 45 minutes extended response. So the break will happen after the part two or after the essay, okay? So um, most of the passages are 75% informational and 25% literary or fiction. Passages uh, are from 400 to 900 words long. They range in complexity, including text at the college and career readiness level. A vocabulary focuses on words that appear frequently in a wide variety of disciplines. So this will measure the students one, ability to read closely, write clearly, edit, and understand written English. Ability to understand, interpret, and answer questions based on text. Ability to use evidence to support an argument and understand of basic English skills at a level needed to succeed in, a col in, in college or a job. <clears throat> so basically, it will check out, in simple terms, it will check out your grammar skills, followed by your reading and comprehension, and of course, the way you write an essay. Okay. Um, hold on. What scores look like? Okay, so let's take a look at the 
scoring. So the G D uh, the G D test uh, will the scores will be reported in the G E D uh, website. You can actually access it through the GED website once you created an account. And of course, your scores will be, uh, I mean, the test taker scores will also be sent in their emails. So if your students ask you um, where should they get their scores, then that's the answer. You can, they can actually check it on their emails or they can access it on the GD website since they will have a login or an account created before they start the tests. Now this is there is also what we call the GED ready practice test. So this is a shortened version of the test that will um, that will be uh, available um, and students can purchase this practice test and um, i think it's for six dollars six us dollars and uh, after that they can assess themselves if they are ready to take the actual test so also it is scored the same way as the actual ged test okay <clears throat> So here's how the GED test is scored. So if you score um, 100 to 144, it means you did not pass. Because you did not demonstrate the skills, graduating high school students, seniors need to earn a high school diploma. So you're not yet college uh, ready, okay? Or you're not yet um, capable to attend a university or even a college. Now the passing score is 145 to 100, okay, 145 and above. So students who earned a GED passing score uh, demonstrated the skills that graduating high school seniors need to earn their diploma. And then you have the college ready 165 to 174. These are students who earn the GED College Ready Score demonstrated skills that graduating high school seniors need to earn their diploma at a level indicating college and career readiness. So it would be good to have 165 and above. And of course, we have the College Ready plus credit score that's 175 to 200. What does that mean? So 200 is the highest score possible <clears throat> on the GED test. And students who earned this level uh, not only demonstrated the skills that graduating high school seniors need to earn their diploma at a level indicating college and career readiness, but they may be eligible up to 10 college credit hours to apply to their program. Three credits for math, for example, three credits for science, and three credits for social studies one credit for language arts. So that's amazing, right? If you got like 175 and above, it's amazing. Okay, so now one more thing that I'd like to talk about is the performance level descriptors. Now every GED RLA teacher should know about this. What is the performance level descriptors? This means or this actually shows how your student, or what is the probability that your student will have a certain score based on their performance. So you can actually, once you have the handbook or the educator handbook, you can just click on the hyperlink and it will redirect you to this part of the website. <clears throat> now, of course, here are the descriptors per subject. And then, of course, this is the descriptors. If your student is doing or actually uh, exposing this particular descriptor, 
it means they will probably have a score of 144 and below, right? So it means below passing. Okay, so maybe they can make inferences at a limited or inconsistent level. If you notice this to, uh, from your student, it means that your student will have a possibly below passing grade or below passing score on the GED test. So an ideal one is to have at least this in your hand and use this as a basis and always have this as your goal uh, or have this is your student's goal you know you can give this to your students and uh, ask them to always use this as their bible in studying the ged rla test so they need to analyze the impact of specific words phrases or figurative language and text with a focus on an author's intent to convey information or construct an argument at a strong level. So this is like the the, meth, the, the things that your students should expose uh, in their skills. And this is what they should be aiming all the time. And you can even access the, um, the higher performance level descriptor again. You can go to the website or you can Google performance level descriptors in GED. And of course, you can go to the language arts section and you can <clears throat> download this PDF files and use it or distribute it to your students and ask them to aim for this skills or this level of skills. Okay. And then another one that you need to know is, of course, we have what we call the skills or the high impact indicators. This is, um, you can actually use this um, as a guide for whatever syllabus that you are using or whatever uh, lesson structure that you are using, you can use the high impact indicators you can google that ged high impact indicators uh, that's different from performance level descriptors though they work hand in hand okay so these are indicators uh, of i mean if you are creating a lesson if you are creating an activity uh, for your students you should remember that you should aim to measure these indicators or these skills. You should also have to aim that this particular uh, task, like for example, to locate a single discrete event or plot point in the text, make sure that all of these skills are being measured. Okay, so this can serve as your guide as well. This is uh, your guide on whatever skill you want your students to improve. Also, as an educator um, for GEB RLA, you have to let your students prepare for the test day itself. So it's really important to know the test day tools. Um, for maths, they can work with a calculator or even in social studies. And for RLA, of course, it's really good to take a look at the interface. So it looks like this. So if your student is asking, um, yeah, you're teaching us using the whiteboard or you're using your visual aids, but we don't know how the interface looks like. So you can actually use this and project this on your screen for your students to see what the interface looks like all right and they can actually play with it all right <clears throat> another one that you should um instruct your students of course um is of course you have to help them write a high scoring extended response 
Now, of course, you can actually Google the uh, scoring the ext okay their extended response scoring tools and uh, you can discuss this to your students especially if you're working with their essay so as, as you notice I'm always referring to the GED website that's GED.com because everything is in there as an educator you know um, everything that you need is in a GED.com website. Of course, some of the learning resources are uh, just limited. Of course, some questions or practice tests are limited. Um, of course, there's a lot of resources online or there are books that you can buy, but the essentials are all in the GED.com website. And then also you need to discuss the basic rules for writing an extended response. This is actually printed out and given to the students on the test day itself. It would be good to discuss this early before your students will take the test. So it will lessen their anxiety and uh, they don't have to, you know, consume a lot of time reading this prior to the test. You know, and there another one is of course, you have to always give your students some feedback so yeah there you go i mentioned a while back the extended response scoring tool uh and of course as a teacher you need to continue learning there are free webinars that ged.com or gd testing service is offering you just have sometimes you just have to click a link I think it's a zoom link or yeah and then even if you can't attend on the live webinar then you can actually save the webinar and you uh, watch it on your free time <clears throat> especially if you're not in the US or you're not in the same time zone as the speakers of the examiner are located okay so i think that's what you have to know about the ged rla teachers guide to the rla test so again always refer back to the ged website and if you want to know more about us uh if you have some students that you need some help with uh we do have a lot of programs that we are offering here in phuket pals and Please do check out our website, that's phuketpals.org, or visit our Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash phuketpals. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share the videos that we have, um, and also the other contents that we have. Thank you so much for your time, and see you again on our next video. Bye-bye.